pretty sharp, doesn't it? It's the new 2016 BMW X1, the latest player in the small but premium SUV segment. Now, it's got a new look, a new interior, new engine, and like the 2 Series Active Tourer, is based on BMW's new front-wheel drive platform. Let's go take a closer look. The old X1 was a real success for BMW. They made over 700,000 of the things. So this new car has some pretty big shoes to fill. It really is a good looking car, designed by an Australian, and could easily be mistaken for say an X3 from a bit of a distance, or maybe an X5 from a well, much longer distance. There's nothing too risky about it, it's quite conservative, it's just, well, smart. Compared to the model it replaces, it's a smidge shorter, but is wider and taller and all that extra volume translates directly into interior space. That's standard, by the way. Now, there's an extra 85 litres of space back here, up to 505, which includes some storage cubbies under the floor. You get remote releases for your 40-20-40 split row, fold it all down, and there's over 1,500 litres of cargo space back there, up a whopping 200 litres on the old car. That's an extra 44-gallon drum worth of cargo volume. That said, it's still a small car and I had trouble getting my mountain bike in the back, even with the seats down. Now folding these seats back requires you to pull a tab as it goes through 11 points of rake adjustment, but once you're done, well, there's plenty of room back here. The bench is on a 60-40 split rail to allow fore and aft adjustment. And I'm six foot three and as you can see, I have plenty of knee, toe and stacks of headroom although I wouldn't want to try and fit three adults across. If you do though, the center belt is one of those weird two stage ones mounted on the roof. Now, of course, being a BMW, you get cup holders, air vents, two Isofix mounting points, and plenty of storage cubbies. Well, this is the business end of the new X1, and in typical SUV fashion, you certainly feel that you're sitting up higher than you were in the old car. Now, it's very BMW in terms of switch gear, but I can't help feeling it's not as nice as it really should be. Everything's very ergonomic, but some of the more premium features are still optional. In this X-Drive 20D spec, you have to spring extra for electric seats, heated seats, head-up display, keyless entry, digital radio, all on top of the car's $56,000 starting price. The 6.5-inch iDrive screen is perhaps a little disappointing compared to the 8.8-inch .8 in the upgrade version. You do get navigation as standard though, as well as city braking and some other driver aids. Plus, push button start. Now despite the front drive platform, which you're reminded of all the time with this pretty dull traditional transmission lever rather than the standard BMW wand, the X1 is all wheel drive. It's got a system that's going to be pretty familiar to a lot of SUV drivers. Front drive bias most of the time, that'll kick in rear when it loses traction at the front. But unlike its larger siblings, you don't get the cool X-Drive displays to show you what's going on here on the iDrive screen. That's a very smooth system. I've been driving this thing around for a week or so now, and you don't get those traditional front drive traits of scrabbling for traction or, or pushy understeer, even on unsealed roads. There are standalone two-wheel drive versions of the X1 coming soon, so we'll see how they fare soon enough. The 140 kilowatt, 400 newton meter, two liter turbo diesel is pretty peppy in the little X1. It gets up to speed well and cruises quite happily. It's economical too. BMW claim 4.9 liters per 100 consumption, and we've seen just over five, which is pretty impressive. Now, the engine itself isn't that noisy, but the car is. At speeds, say, above 60 kilometers an hour, you get maybe a little bit of extra wind from the mirrors, but there's a real dull drone that comes from down in the firewall, which for mine, smacks of cost saving on insulation. It sort of ruins the, the premium BMW experience. That said, spending time in the X1, particularly around town and at shopping speeds, it's not actually a bad place to be. Now, the eight-speed automatic transmission is typical BMW smooth. And even if you self-shift from the nice paddles here on the steering wheel, well, it's a really quite a fun car to drive. And it puts the sports back into sports utility vehicle. But with that moniker comes a pretty firm ride. Now, on smooth roads, the X1 has a very sort of sporting appeal and it feels direct and responsive, more like a BMW. But move off smooth roads, things change quite a bit. 
over bumpy surfaces like cobblestones, you can really hear and feel the suspension working over time. It's almost as if it's not up to the task. Find some harder man-made edges, for example, like expansion joints or railway crossings, and things get even worse and you get a real thump into the cabin as the suspension seems to bottom out. Now all of this can be addressed with the optional dynamic damper control which is available for $690. It doesn't change the overall feel of the X1 and it still retains its sporty demeanour but it just softens the whole experience and makes things, well, a little bit more palatable. It's optional on every model of the X1, even the top spec 25i, but don't be surprised if it starts to work its way into becoming standard equipment. Which leads us to value. Now this 20D model is $56,000 before options and on-road costs. The top spec 25i petrol is $59,000 but comes with close to $10,000 worth of equipment that is optional on this car. Now diesel usually attracts a, a $1,000 to $2,000 premium, not a $5,000 to $6,000 one. It's certainly something to bear in mind when you're shopping in the showroom. Well look, we quite like BMW's all new 2016 X1 SUV. It's good looking, it's well appointed, and it's got a great interior with some very clever features. Thing is though, it can be quite noisy. The value equation, particularly on the diesel, is, well, a little bit out of kilter. And honestly, unless you spend most of your time gliding over newly paved roads, that rides a little bit firm. So should you get the adaptive suspension? To be honest, yes. It softens the hard edges on what otherwise ruins the premium nature of BMW's latest SUV.